Hi everyone, I'm Shauna and welcome to my channel. Today we're doing something that's really unique for my channel and I'm taking you through a tour of my Notion page. I found Notion this summer, I think in June or July, somewhere around there, and I have been super into it, obsessed with it, loving it ever since. And I think I've gone through a lot of the phases that a lot of people go through, making your Notion really pretty and then kind of, you know, making it more practical as we go along. I do a lot of different things in Notion and they've kind of evolved over time. And I'm gonna take you through my Notion page and you're gonna kind of see it um, as it is. Things that aren't working, things I'm experimenting with and um, I'm going to show you everything along the way. If you're new to Notion, I think it's technically a productivity app, but I don't know if I would qualify it as that because you can do so many things in Notion. I guess, you know, it does help with productivity, but you could journal in there. You could track all kinds of things. I think a lot of like project planners, I just use the online version and I'm going to take you through that today. In my opinion, and I rarely say this kind of thing, that I think Notion is the kind of place where you're better off using the templates of other people. Anything that I know is somebody else's work, I'm going to link it in the description box below. The two main creators I've used are August Bradley. His, I think, are really explicit, and then some stuff from Jules Acri. Um, there might be some other things along the way that came from other people if I remember them as I kind of go along, I'll be sure to mention them and or link them in the description box below. Here is my homepage and I just updated the little banner um, for the holiday time. And Notion is just extremely customizable. You could do so much with it and it's all like drag and drop kind of blocks. And so on my homepage, I have my life kind of broken up into four different categories. You're gonna see most of it today. You're not gonna see content pages. Um, so you're not gonna see the business hub. Like there's barely anything there and that's a work in progress for 2022. So one of the things you'll see is like this thing called the action zone. We'll get into that shortly. That takes a little bit more time to plan and I don't like planning at night because it just gives me a lot of anxiousness about that I remember all the things, am I doing enough? Just too many thoughts. So I'll just dump a couple of things that I want to do first thing in the morning uh, on this little, almost like scratch paper. And then in the morning, I'll go out and fully plan my day. Uh, scrolling down is something I just call immediate notes on the right hand side. This is just things that I've learned in conversation and want them up front where I can remember and Put them in their appropriate place later things i want to mull over again kind of like scratch paper this is just makes so much sense to me because i check my notion page every day and if i go put it in a separate page or a notes page or like a sticky notes tab or i create anything else i will forget to check it so i'm already here it just works and then uh, on the left hand side i have words i live by i'm pretty sure i saw this on jules acri's page and I just created my own and I add them every so often kind of as I see fit. I love this because I do check it a couple times a week. Things that I need to remember and I always want in the forefront of my mind. So let's dive into the first section. So this is called the action zone and this is from August Bradley. So you have all of these sections up here and then as you open them out you have today and then you have tomorrow and then this week. So you can just plan your whole week in the this week section, or you could just plan day by day, whatever is kind of necessary. I tend to just plan day by day. I'll occasionally input the odd task um, in the calendar, which he has here. I have things like final grades and like a grade meeting um, as reminders on the calendar. They'll show up when we get there, but we're still not we're still too far out and so most things um are i'll just plan on the on the daily except for the reminders as you'll see like i have on november 26th i entered tutorial grades and here um my course supervisor has to actually create the entry in order for me to put in the course grades that's not something i can do myself so i just kind of have it at the bottom here as a reminder 
what i really like about his system is that you can track for today tomorrow and then the the week and then he has a priority system so you have quick task scheduled errand reminder and then first through fifth priority i only ever really use first and second priority i don't know if i've ever used third and then he has something called a due date i'm gonna link his video all about this um in the in the description box so i actually filmed a couple of these videos so they can go and as soon as you click done they disappear and then you have your status um that you can update as well one thing that he also has is the life data and habit tracking um this is filtered by day only so this is today's i do most of the entering in the evening like we'll talk about the feeling log later that is at night time and then some of these stuff are just reminders like um did i work out today and if i did i get to see if i worked out and today's a rest day <laughs> i did like the yesterday and i went way too hard so i am i am what i call a penguin so there's no workout today and just some other tasks that i want to rem remind myself to do these are mostly built on his um what i really like is percent of the day on schedule and then percent of planned output completed and i just put my little reminder at the bottom as to like the distinction between those and i really like to think about um productivity in this sense and then the life data and habit tracking is just a a bigger version of that tracking i just showed you so you can see a more holistic view i'm not going to show you that today because you've already kind of seen the template in the alignment zone it's the last of the things that he has and this is a work in progress for me and i realized i was trying to create this and realize not the place for me quite yet because he has things like guiding principles and driving motivation i hadn't figured this quite out yet so it didn't really make sense to create my guiding principles and life pillars and goal pipelines it didn't make sense for me to quite make those yet so what i've been doing is um, working on creating like my values and then also aligning those with the goals so what i have here is truly a work in progress of this is like the first iteration of getting clear on what i value in life so i can align my actions and my goals with my values and i've been doing the work to get these ideas about values elsewhere which i'll show you next and i'm hoping by the time i finish this that i can have like a mini thesis statement or mini statement, I guess, for each of the values. And this is certainly not going to be the final iteration um, or if this is going to be the final thing that I want for myself, but this is what I'm thinking about in progress. Last on here is a template from Jules Acri. So she has, uh, this is hers and I just put in words for 2022. It's a pretty comprehensive system um, for goal setting. And then you can even go into your quarterly goals and each one has a page as well and i'm not quite here yet in in setting up for next year i'm, I'm not there yet so when i do that i do think um that i might adjust some of these things and i really like that i have a, a starting place she also has um a tour of how she uses this planning system hello everyone welcome and the video is right there so i'm excited to work on this as we go but we haven't i think one of the things i use the most okay i use the journal home the most and then the wardrobe home those two are probably really similar because there's so much that happens here in a recent video i talked about this first thing which is my toolbox and this is i created this because of the phrase um like a writing toolbox or people it's it's such a phrase that people use about creating all these skills and then kind of like you have now a toolbox of skills you can use but very rarely have i ever actually articulated those things or put them in any kind of comprehensive way and so it's like you're creating skills of some sort and then forgetting about them so i decided to make this a physical thing there's mostly like i don't want to call it mental health but there's mostly there's mostly self-development and self-work things here and so i have worksheets 
which are actually worksheets that I've been given from mental health professionals are found through the recommendation of a mental health professional. And I have a fresh one kind of queued up. And whenever I'm kind of needing it, they're right here. I have also privated some of my personal thoughts on this because to me, this is the most intimate part of my life. Like when you're struggling with something and that's not something I'm down to share. And so what I like about this is when I'm struggling with something, I have the thing to go to, to draw on, to queue up um, when I need it. So I do have a couple, so there's about four worksheets in there. And then I have a couple of worksheets that are just ready on the go. And these are the ones I use the most. Um, I'm not gonna share automatic thoughts with you because there's stuff in there that is already happening. And I did share a blank one in a recent video. Countering anxious thoughts is very similar. So I can show this one where you change your anxiety producing thought and put a rational circumstance to it. And I have some practice ones there as well. These are so helpful, especially when I'm like, for me personally, it's like the anxiousness, the worry or negative thoughts. So the automatic thoughts here that can really lead to a negative downward spiral. And so I need to get on those right away. In the core beliefs one, this is where I'm actually working through my core beliefs. And so here's just one that I was working on. And this one, um, I didn't know where to start in trying to figure out my own values and core beliefs. So I just found some things to just start. And that's the hardest thing in my opinion, is, is just starting. And so when I get in here, I realized that this only scratched the surface of the things that I think about and the things that I care about or might value. And so I was able to come up with where I felt like there were gaps, but also realized that this just wasn't as robust as I needed it to be. But what I appreciate about this is it's just that. It's just the jumping off point. And I was able to start that thinking process. And then when you have a jumping off point, you can start to pivot and start to get more specific about what your needs are and what's missing. And that is what this allowed me to do. So this core belief section is all about that value declaration, that finding your, your core beliefs, core values, so I can transition them into my values statement. And maybe those two things could happen in the same place, but that distinction is just in my mind, that makes sense in my mind, so um, it works. And then these two down here are the first ones I created for spending specific things. I shared this one in a recent video. And as I kind of go through and have more experience, I can add more things uh, on here. And this is not something I have to complete every time. This is the check-in before you purchase this thing um, kind of tool. And it's been working pretty well. The other two I have to create are these two um, and this one like read before you check out needs to be more specific which is why it's blank and not actually a page and then um, curating and enjoying the process is one that I'm I think that might give some insight into what I'm planning for next year but that needs to be transitioned somewhere and it's not a page sometimes I'll just create a page without putting anything in it but I haven't created the page because I don't know if it belongs here. So next is the future self journal. And this is something that I learned about in How to Do the Work by Nicole Pera, And I found it on her website. This is one that um, I can show you a blank template. Just decide I was thinking of starting it, but then it just felt like too much journaling at this point. And I also wasn't quite sure what kind of journaling I wanted to do and I'm kind of in the process of figuring that out as you'll probably see in this video and so it felt like too much of a commitment at this time and I also felt like I needed to finish her book before doing this. I also stopped her book because it was just like too much of like it's one of the best books I've ever read but it's too much like emotionally for me at the moment it's too heavy and I'm just not in the place to, to work on that. 
excuse me oh i have this twice okay so i have a prompt example which are examples from her book which is like how to fill it in and some of the things that she's put in so today i'm practicing allowing myself to feel worthy of love um and then how to fill in if you're thinking about that one of the ones i was thinking about recently is today i'm practicing assertiveness that's what i really want to focus on so this is here and queued up and ready for me when i've read the book and i'm ready to come back to it the feeling log is something that is one of my older journaling practices in notion i started it on october 8th you will notice that um November 15th is the last date. That is because I've been trying this on paper. I did read um, somewhere recently that when it comes to like getting that emotional response from journaling, um, there's some studies that show that physical paper journaling is more effective. So I'm working on that right now. And I did this for about six weeks and I've only been doing... Um, my paper journaling as you've seen for about two ish three weeks so i feel like i need more time to be able to come to my own conclusion i do like the online format i like putting the faces there and also seeing some of my um feelings here and what i just like i mean this is kind of personal to show this data and how i've been feeling um but i've come to really see a shift in how I've been feeling and I love actually being able to see that so what's in the feeling log I didn't create this by the way this was given to me by a professional um, so describing a key moment in your life that affected how you felt today and then how did it make you feel and then understanding if there was a physical response one of the things that I didn't realize I had a trouble distinguishing between is how something affects how I feel versus how something affects me physically. And I've had a really hard time distinguishing if I have a physical response and noticing what that is. And even though I've been doing this for a few months now, I still have some difficulty with that. I've gotten better at it, but that is one of the main reasons why I think this is helpful. It's also really come to help me understand what affects me day to day. And when it comes to like, when I'm talking about journaling practices, when it comes to countering negative emotions and understanding how I feel, this has been really powerful. So I don't really feel like I need journaling practices with that built in, but I do want a journaling practice that there's like gratitude and like positivity built in. And that's not what this is for. The last kind of journaling thing is my online journal and um, there's a lot of different stuff in here. I have, I've done some things with the morning routine. I have the advent journaling from becoming who you are that's in here. So I'm going to put in a daily entry. This is the one that I have been experimenting with, which has a morning, evening, and a general, because I do like a nightly reflection kind of built in to my journaling. Um, and I guess what I've realized in the last couple of days working on this one is that I like the future self journal prompts better and helps me be way more intentional about my day. And I think that there's some kind of combination that I can come up with where I could put some of these prompts in with the future self journal prompts that are a little bit more specific. So I think that's what I'm gonna do because it has only been through using this, I've realized where the holes are which was the point of doing it anyways. The last thing on this section is self-healing. And I am such a student kind of through and through that and I've also done a lot of independent studies in my life. And I'm somebody who can do an independent study. But the way to do it is, or the way that things stick and function and work for me is if I position them like school because I'm such a student. So, I created my own course, if you will, and I even weighted the assignments. And then I created modules and schedules. So each of them has like a book or theme associated with it. And I'm going to find a blank page here, December 6th to 12th. That's the week we're currently in. It's currently blank because the week that I 
was before it took longer than I expected. So it's just a continuation of the week before. The good thing about this for me is that I am allowed to read a little bit slower because I'm not in school and I can curate my pace so I can read at my own pace. But all of the work here, that is the daily feeling log, morning intentions, once a week deep dive, end of week reflection, they're all built into this kind of weekly system and they're all embedded in these kinds of uh, things here. Those are going to remain private because they are my own work and um, that's really what I wanted to share with you now. I put in books that I was interested in reading that felt like they would be helpful, but I don't necessarily know if I'm going to choose that one. Like I have the highly sensitive person in here, but I'm thinking now and even nervous energy that I'm, I think I'm going to switch those out. They're not, they're not what is resonating with me the most and what is I feel like necessary for me at this time. And I like that flexibility as well. So the only thing to show you here is the content pages. This is probably also an area I use a lot. My advent calendars that I created are in here and I have two kind of, well I have three content planning tools. The first is the content planner and this one is created by Jules Acri. So majority of my videos are created in here and I've changed things up for Vlogmas just because I have so many videos that I'm working on. And what I like about this is that it's pretty thorough. You have um, how this video will provide impact. I think that is one that I added, but there's a full description, links to include, um, and then the goal of the video, then there's the content, pre-filming checklist, and then the launch checklist. There's so much in here um, that you can put. And I've also, like there is a shortened template that I do use sometimes as well. Yeah, this one is a shortened template where I have keywords and key information, and then I have the script, and then um, the research and notes as well. So this is the shortened one and most of my videos are produced via these scripts. And then there's a video project tracker, which is mostly just ideas opposed to things that are actually in progress. And I have all of these different, um, different like buckets, content buckets. I also use this, pretty basic board for content ideas. This one is strictly for if you have an idea, just write it down. And sometimes the script will develop in here too, which just depends on the circumstance. So one of the things, go to this one here, um, I have two roll-ups, so related to content. And then this is the video in, um, in one of the content pages. And then the script, this one here, is a relation to the first database you saw. So let me go back to the content planner. Um, okay, so okay, so the gift guide, this one is an example. Related to content, and then the idea. And then other ones will, like they'll say script, and then they'll link them back to this one. So all three are linked together. That might be a little confusing, but all these three functions are linked together. The last one is the content calendar. And this is where I actually schedule out my videos. So when it comes to a new month, if what I put in the idea board, I'll put them anytime. If I get an idea, it'll go in there and that'll usually be the first place I check. But when I'm actually planning out a month, Let's go to February because that one is blank. I'll just start like adding them in and just adding in new videos. And then I can move them around. So when it comes to November, you'll see a little bit of December at the bottom. I'll put them in and then it's like, oh, I don't want the project pan here. I actually want to put it on the 10th. I can just drag these guys around. This one is hovering in the middle because it was supposed to be somewhere that it ended up getting replaced and it's just there so I don't forget about it. Most of my scripts now are being written in this board 
just for ease of use because again of how many videos i do like producing them in that script template because i get to be extra thorough about what kind of value i think this video has and often that will be the place that i appreciate that one the most because i, I want my content to be applicable and useful and it's when i use that reduced template where it doesn't have that question in there that sometimes i produce content that like is good and enjoyable but like could have been better so let's get to the last section of home and life so next up we have reading reading and i've tracked my reading in a couple of different ways before i have loved this one the best and i'm going to kind of clear the slate for next year and kind of have this blank i haven't read a lot this year quite honestly because it's just been a year <laughs> so i have what i've been reading here as you can see just a handful of books and i only started tracking this in august really so there's a huge part of the year that never got tracked and then i also have this want to read section that is tracking like what's on my my list i find this more effective than goodreads because i often forget to check goodreads and then there's so much in there and i'm like what do i even want to read anymore how old is that and what I like about my bookshelf is that it has just all the information that I want and what feels kind of digestible. So I have my author, the status of whether it's read, I'm reading it, or it's a DNF, did not finish. I do ratings out of 10. It, in my mind, all ratings should be out of 10 because it's very clear, because the percent and the value is just way clearer. And then it has date started, date finished, and then the format and genre. And that's really all I feel like I need to track. I think it might be page numbers in here. Oh, I also have, yeah, page numbers, do I own it, and thoughts. And some things have thoughts, some things don't. Kind of simple, but it works. One of my favorite pages in here is from Jules Acri, and it's to buy or not to buy. And I've kind of um, elaborated on what she's done. And so I put everything in here that I'm thinking of buying. So I have the date, the item, the price, why I wanna buy it, the category, and then if I purchased it. I also have the question, does this align with the life I'm trying to create? How will this impact my life in two years? And then how long did I wait before I bought it? What you're seeing here is a work in progress. I am trying to figure out how to work in the uh, percentage bar, like what percentage of my purchase it is. I wanted to know, like what I wanted it to do is have like a budget of let's say $300. And then every time I made a purchase, the bar increased instead of having that bar per purchase. So I don't know if I'm gonna keep that because if I don't put in the value, then it just has infinity and it's not, doesn't really do anything. And then I also have notes here. Oh, the budget is supposed to be here. And then I have product type. The only reason why I have that is so I can filter for other things. Now down below is money I didn't spend. So this is just a filter of what's above. And so I, um, so it filters by things you didn't purchase and it has notes, price, and then the item. And so it also has the sum of all the money that you save by not buying this thing. Yes, there is a test in here because I, I messed up the filtering between a couple of different places and it wasn't working. So I did a test and I figured it out. I love this and you'll see this again in just a little bit this has just been so helpful in helping me think through what i want to buy and also allowing me to create some thinking behind it and also space um, and leaving it kind of for later the last place um, is my wardrobe home one of the heaviest used things in here is my wardrobe inventory this is a template i found on reddit it just has like the name of the thing, the color. Um, I also have this section, it's for winter wardrobe wears. So what I have, I created a couple of really cool algorithms. I have cost per wear 
and then I also have the total wears so I was initially tracking the wears in the fall time but now some of these things are being worn in winter and I didn't really know how to I wanted to keep these seasons separate so I know how much I'm wearing it every season so basically what it does is adds the fall wear to the winter wear and then it comes out as total wears over here so I can check back in with that later at some point to see how much I'm wearing it so it has the season and everything is currently filtered for winter only so if the thing can be worn for fall and winter it'll show up but there's also things I just introduced for winter time and they're showing up here there's like color shapes types the price and then it does the cost per wear oh it should show up okay I just found a mistake because it's not calculating the cost per wear for here for these guys when the prices are there I think that means I just need to adjust my formula which I'm pretty sure yeah it's based on fall wear okay we're just gonna leave it because I don't know if I can do the cost per wear based on the total wears if the total wears is also a formula I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there because now the cost per wear is not going to change for any of them okay I'm gonna have to figure that out the there's nothing really in here and these ones here um, this this fall capsule was what I created for the channel this is just not serving me right now and also some of this the stuff um, it misaligned when I'm not sure what happened but it did not look like this previously the formatting kind of got screwed up this is just kind of giving me a headache like anxiety it's just not looking the way I want to I also don't feel like I need another one of these for my winter capsule because I'm not really buying anything new and I don't feel like I need a revisioning because the season hasn't really changed and I'm I'm wearing most of the same clothes so I personally don't feel like I need a revisioning for my capsule so I'm not really messing with that um, the next thing that I use a lot is shopping and this is one that's kind of I've been tweaking on to work for next year so I've started working on shopping goals and I'm gonna flesh these out more I have budgeting here I also have a wish list and budget so what I've done is this I've just been working on kind of slowly so this is the same larger database so when one changes here it will change for all of them and this is filtered for December 1st so my winter wardrobe starts December 1st and the budget that applies to my winter wardrobe started December 1st too so I have so everything that I'm looking to buy um, that is as of December 1st is added here and then what I actually bought um, is here so I have the clothing budget here and then as I use it I have a test here um, I will add to it as I go this is how I think I'm going to use it I think to have both of these place these things in one place is helpful and then having the same tool kind of appear over and over again I was thinking of creating a separate one but it just doesn't make sense to me and I think I might enter things from different places if I'm looking to buy something and I don't buy it I still want it to appear in that, that other list this is not finished it's a work in progress and more needs to happen here this is not the final layout and I want to I was hoping to be able to do something more with this and be able it to be maybe a, I I don't know I wanted maybe the progress bars here I'm not fully sure we have a couple weeks out before I need this to function as it should but this is kind of where it's at and I guess the starting place of my project I also have this and it's a seasonal assessment of my wardrobe and so this is something that's also in progress I worked on this for a couple of days and then kind of put on the back burner to come back to it this I don't know if this is necessarily 
the most aesthetic or practical way to do it but this is the way that kind of made sense to me but when i'm looking at it now i'm like this just seems like a lot that doesn't like there's little distinction between the question and the answer so i think i'm gonna just have to um finesse this a little bit and it's to me it's like once you go through it you realize oh this is actually not working the way that i wanted so i think there at least needs to be some distinction between questions and maybe grouping them better i think that might be helpful and then i have some reflection and then what's up next for next year i'm still working on the reflection so then i also need to put on how much money i spent on each category and kind of come back in here and fill that information the section on the wares has been really helpful so because i have that database it's been really easy for me to go in here and be like oh i have this many pieces that are over two years old that represents this amount of my wardrobe that i love numbers and so i think that's been so helpful in kind of seeing what i'm wearing and how it's serving me or not to tweak for the future so that's shopping and this one is for sure a work in progress that maybe i'll show you again next year um, and how i'm thinking about the project but that's where we are right now i have as you'll see here i have the wish list and budget that you just saw in shopping also here i will do that with new pages if i'm not sure how i will use them so i mean it doesn't bother me to leave them in both places but preferably i would like to have it in one place but i have them in two for now so i can just actually see how i use them in real life i have an opportunity for outfit logging but nothing is here yet so this is my notion as it stands as you can see i'm doing a lot in here some things are true works in progress some things are working really well and other things are just like super functional and i feel like i've created a system that is working for me and i've also feel like i've learned a lot about my preferences where like i know something's not working it's time to tweak it or change it and so there is nothing in here at the moment that has currently fallen flat but there are things that there's lots of works in progress that are happening here and i found that to be really important to show i think a lot of videos show you that after i've created my aesthetic notion page and here are all the things that i'm doing and how perfect my life is and how together things are i think very few people's lives are like that in reality i also think there's value in seeing how people think through things how and like what the process is and that to me is valuable if not as as valuable as the finished product because how you get there might even be more important than the fact that you did so that is my notion tour i know a super long video i would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below about kind of what i've been doing with notion and how you've been using notion if you use notion i would love to hear how you use it some of your favorite pages i would love to hear all the notion chat in the comments down below thank you so much for hanging out with me today and watching this video and i hope to see you again around here soon bye